all over America. Large portions of our major cities are becoming disgusting cesspools of misery. The standard of living that fueled the growth and prosperity of previous generations no longer exist. And now, we're confronting a decaying reality of rising poverty, homelessness, and substance abuse even in some of the nation's wealthiest areas. In a short span of two years, thousands of tent cities popped up from coast to coast. The amount of rats, human, and animal waste is so off the charts that in San Francisco, officers received over 28,000 complaints about public sanitation issues in the past year alone. The decline of our main metropolitan areas is just a reflection of an economy that is steadily falling apart. And the greatest threat we are currently facing is a rapidly deepening downturn that's likely to unleash civil unrest all around the country. But while some are rushing to flee dysfunctional cities before another black swan event hits, millions remain trapped in stomach-churning conditions, completely unaware of the dangers that lie ahead. That's what we're going to expose today. Before moving on, please support us with a thumbs up in this video and subscribe to our channel so you can keep up to date with the most important news. Over the past few months, we've been documenting the decline of some of America's greatest cities. Economists, authorities, and locals seem shocked to see just how bad things have gotten in such a short period of time. But the truth is that the social decay we're all witnessing right now is a consequence of a system where it has become nearly impossible for ordinary Americans to thrive. Absurd home and rent prices are leaving millions in profound housing insecurity. Meanwhile, we're being forced to spend more and more of our monthly budgets just to afford the same pool of things and services we used to consume on a regular basis. At the same time, our wages continue to be devoured by inflation, and precarious labor conditions are leading millions upon millions of people to simply give up their jobs and let despair take over. In face of such a gut-wrenching scenario, we can surely understand why some of the most beautiful urban centers of the United States look like they've been hit by a zombie apocalypse. And despite the persistent requests for better maintenance and public services, our leaders keep insisting that everything is in good shape and will all be just fine. Perhaps it's easier for them to have this perception considering that they mostly live in heavily sanitized, wealthy suburban neighborhoods, and they want us to believe in heavily sanitized corporate media sources. But in the real world, things are getting really ugly. Not long ago, columnist Elsie Grandison authored an op-ed piece in which he described what life is like in Los Angeles right at the moment. In 2021, L.A. spent over $620 million, and that's tax dollars, just to address its homelessness crisis. And yet, the homeless population jumped by 16% in the past year alone, representing an additional 60,000 people living on the city streets. As a Los Angeles resident, I am among those who wonder what the mayor's office is doing. When I lived downtown, it was virtually impossible to walk a full block in any direction without seeing a homeless person. In Silver Lake, where I live now, there are tent cities. On my drive to work, I see people living underneath the highway overpasses. It's no longer Skid Row here. The Skid is everywhere, Grandison wrote. Sadly, that description could also apply to San Francisco, Portland, Seattle, Denver, Minneapolis, Chicago, Detroit, 
St. Louis, Memphis, Cleveland, Baltimore, Philadelphia, New York, and countless other U.S. cities. But without a doubt, L.A.'s collapse is particularly hard to watch. People from outside of the U.S. have an image of the city in their minds that no longer matches reality. In fact, those who live there expose some seriously repulsive aspects that we oftentimes choose to ignore. In a feature article for the Los Angeles Times, columnist Steve Lopez highlighted the collapse of a city that's lost control. A swathe of Los Angeles has devolved into a wasteland with rats scurrying among piles of decaying garbage and squalid tent cities. The city of Los Angeles has become a giant trash receptacle, Lopez stressed. What century is this, he asked. Is this the 21st century in the largest city of a state that ranks among the world's most robust economies? Or did someone turn back the calendar a few hundred years? A few years ago, illegal dumpers were a little more discreet, tossing their refuge in fields and gullies and remote outposts, Lopez continued. Now, city streets are treated like dumpsters or even toilets. The conditions are so untenable that local offices are threatening to seek transfers after some of them developed typhoid, the Times reported, with many others showing symptoms of intestinal issues. In an official statement, the LAPD said that officers often patrol in adverse environments and can be exposed to various dangerous elements. Similarly in New York, Giant piles of trash are being spotted in every corner of the city. Every time I'm on this block, it's like this, Ali Marconi, a financial district resident, told Streets Blog, saying, the trash bags take up the whole sidewalk. You can't even use the sidewalk. It's disgusting. It's terrible. The Big Apple, one of the biggest symbols of prosperity and economic strength that we have, has actually been voted as one of the top three dirtiest cities in the entire world, according to the Times. And despite the rampant levels of societal rot, it turns out that it's incredibly expensive to live among the garbage. Since January, rents rose 33% in New York City, 16% in Los Angeles, and 12% in Chicago. But many Americans are realizing that living in these decaying places is unsustainable, and they've been doing everything they can to relocate before another disaster, emergency, or downturn emerges. A mover's report has shown that 8.93 million people moved since October 2021. That's an increase of nearly 94,000 from the same period the year before. Most of them are moving away from New York, LA, Chicago, Detroit, Baltimore, and Cleveland in search of safer areas in the South, Southwest, and Southeast. Home buyers coming to the South are seeking more safety, noted the National Association of Realtors. Their perception was that it wasn't safe to walk their streets, that things had changed and they were not going back, one researcher wrote. This change in the landscape and in the core of our major urban areas is happening right before our eyes. But the government says that conditions are still stable in the U.S. economy. Well, the truth is that right now the U.S. economy is indeed a whole lot more stable than it will be in the months ahead, which does not really mean that we have nothing to worry about. With housing affordability issues worsening, and a huge part of the population at risk of facing energy poverty this winter. Have you already stopped to wonder what are those cities going to look like once we get deep into the ongoing economic downturn? Already, the populations of some of our largest cities are steadily shrinking, and many experts are completely mystified by the seismic demographic shifts that are occurring. For some families, it simply comes down to wanting a better life for their children. 
But for many others, it has become evident that things in this country are about to take an apocalyptic turn, and the big cities will not be a place that you will want to be when economic collapse, rioting, looting, social unrest, and chaos are all spiraling out of control. For instance, the Chicago Tribune recently ran a story about preppers moving away from urban areas and stockpiling ahead of the winter. One of them, a 37-year-old Somalia named Trevor Treller, said that the coming food shortages could lead to crippling chaos. So he and his wife have laid in food, self-defense tools, and are installing an iron gate across their long gravel driveway. Of course, it isn't just ordinary Americans such as Treller that are seriously concerned about what's coming. Earlier this year, even CNN revealed that the 1% are preparing for the apocalypse in billionaire bunkers. Many of the world's elite, including hedge fund managers, sports stars, and tech executives, in fact, Bill Gates is rumored to have bunkers at all his properties, have chosen to design their own secret shelters to house their families and staff. Gary Lynch, general manager of Texas-based Rising S Company, says sales for their custom high-end underground bunkers grew 700% compared to a year prior, while overall sales have grown 300%, it reported. The rich plan to ride out the current economic meltdown in style, while the world above them is literally going insane. On the flip side, the general population continues to be completely oblivious to what's about to happen to them, meaning that, unfortunately, the events that are coming will close upon them suddenly like a trap, and there will be no escape. Most people will continue to live in denial until the very end, and even though 61% of the population is living paycheck to paycheck, people continue to rack up debt as if there was no tomorrow. The numbers are truly shocking. The median home price in 1950 was 2.2 times the average annual income. By 2022, it was seven times the average annual income. Child care costs grew by about 2,000%. Yep, you heard that right. 2,000% for child care costs, and that's the growth between 1970 and 2020. Family premiums for employer-based health insurance jumped by 47% between 2011 and 2021, and deductibles and out-of-pocket costs shot up by almost 70%. The average price for brand-named drugs skyrocketed by 236% between 2009 and 2018. You know, Americans are drowning in debt, but the cost of living continues to climb much faster than inflation, leaving us imprisoned in a system that is doomed to fail. Subs always ask us how they can prepare for the imminent economic disaster, and one of the key pieces of advice we always give is to get rid of all debt and try to become more self-reliant. At this point, Everyone should be building up their financial cushions because what is coming is not a joke. The time to wake up is now. Those who refuse to face this reality will find themselves ill-prepared to handle the very harsh economic environment that is ahead. Thank you very much for watching this, and if you find our content informative, we strongly recommend you check out Michael Snyder's Seven Year Apocalypse, the latest book by the economist and financial expert. In the meantime, don't forget to hit the bell to always get our notifications, and please share this message with friends and family.